The Field Management System, or FMS, is the backbone of the arena's scoring and communication system. This video will make it more transparent to you. The details are also covered in the FMS white paper that you can find on the FIRST website. The FMS encompasses all the controls for the field electronics and robots. It manages the event by creating match schedules, operating field hardware, scoring matches in real time, hosting information to the audience screen, and uploading results data to the internet. Components such as the driver station and the ref's touch screens integrate with FMS through direct wired ethernet. The e-stops and stack lights mounted in each player station interface through ethernet-based IO modules that are donated to FIRST by Rockwell Automation. The light strings are controlled via ethernet-enabled power supplies donated to FIRST by Philips Color Kinetics. Two core components control the robot, the C-Rio controller and a computer running the FRC driver station, or DS, software. The DS is the master controller. The status and actions of the robot are determined by commands from the DS. Packets from the DS are broadcast by the integrated radio in the DS computer, by a separate radio, like the access point used on the playing field, or through a tether. The D-Link radio on the robot receives the packets from the DS and forwards them to the C-Rio. Status packets from the C-Rio are sent to the DS after each received command packet. On the competition field, packets from a DS are routed through the managed switches in the station control cabinet and scorpion case to the field access point, which then transmits the packets to the appropriate robot. The D-Link radio on the robot receives the transmissions from the field access point and forwards the packets to the C-Rio. The FMS communicates with each DS via the field's Ethernet network and employs team-specific VLANs, which serve to isolate each team's data traffic. The FMS doesn't communicate with robots directly. It gathers data from the DS about a robot's status and tells the DS if it's enabled, disabled, or e-stopped, and if the robot should be in autonomous or teleoperated mode. It also tells the DS its player station and alliance color. If a team stack light is flashing, the FMS doesn't think your DS has a connection to your robot. There are two common ways for this condition to occur. The DS is not communicating with FMS, or the DS is telling FMS that it cannot communicate with the robot. The FMS configures the managed switches and field access point before each match to ensure that data and communications for each team are kept separate. Each team has its own VLAN, ensuring that the command packets from one team's DS do not cause a response on another team's robot. These VLANs exist on both the wired and wireless side of the playing field's network. That's why it's necessary for a team in blue player station number one to connect their DS into the corresponding cable for that station. On the wireless side of the network, VLANs are configured prior to the start of each match so that only the six teams assigned an FMS may operate. That's why it's necessary to configure your D-Link radio at the kiosk at each event your team attends. After VLAN setup is complete, which is called match pre-start, the FMS sends out command packets to the six DSs. When a team plugs their DS into their Ethernet cable, the DS receives these command packets and switches into FMS mode. FMS Connected is displayed on the DS Operation tab. The DS continues to serve as the master controller for the robot, but state and mode are dictated by the FMS. The FMS tells the DS what to do, and the DS then tells the robot. Practice mode, which you can use at home to simulate match timing, and FMS mode, which happens when you're connected to the field, do have differences, but the majority of the functions are identical. Both operating modes step through the same states, which are listed and described in more detail in the FMS white paper. Joysticks are handled a bit differently between the two modes. In practice mode, unplugging a joystick will result in the robot being switched to disabled. This is designed to be a safety feature, as the robot may be running in a variety of environments that might not be equipped with barriers to safely contain the robot. Unplugging a joystick in FMS mode won't result in the robot being disabled. If a joystick becomes disconnected, simply plugging it back in will not result in it returning to normal operation. The user must press F1 on the DS to manually rescan the USB interface to redetect the joystick. More details on why are included in the FMS white paper. Finally, the network port used by the DS to send command packets to the robot is different in practice mode from the one used when in FMS mode. Details about the network ports are included in the FMS white paper and the arena section of the FRC game manual. The practice field at your event isn't integrated into the FMS at all. It uses a different field access point and doesn't employ VLANs. In fact, 
If you want to operate wirelessly on the practice field, you'll need to use a first supplied radio that's configured specifically to operate with the practice field access point. The FMS incorporates bandwidth limiting for each team. The limit is 7 megabits per second on the competition field. We strongly recommend that you incorporate this bandwidth limit for practice at home to mimic the FMS environment. Details on how to do this are included in the FMS white paper. The FMS gives control and status packets the highest priority on the network. Even though teams may be using more network bandwidth, control and status packets are prioritized over other user data, like camera feeds. These are the conditions to expect when on the field and how they may differ from those at home or on the practice field. Taking the time to understand these parameters will help you better prepare for competition and troubleshoot any surprises. Good luck.